This video looks at developing a process FMEA using the seven-step approach of the AIG VDA FMEA Handbook, first edition. Today we're looking at step seven, results documentation. By the time that we get to this step seven, we have already invested significant time in developing the FMEA, and maybe we've already started to spend money on putting better prevention or detection controls in place. And hopefully, when we go into product launch, we're going to see reduced or hopefully zero customer complaints. We're not going to have warranty concerns because we've addressed all of the risks. And hopefully, we would start to see a reduction in the cost of poor quality compared with other previous similar products. Now we've got to step seven, let's just sit back for one minute and think about this seven step approach and what it is trying to achieve. So step one, two and three are about analyzing the system. Step four, five and six are about failure analysis and risk mitigation. This seven step is still very, very important because this is now about risk communication. So the seven step results documentation. The purpose of this step is to summarize and communicate the results of the FMEA activity. So for example, we may prepare an FMEA summary report, which could be used internally, or maybe we could also use it to share the results of the FMEA with the customer, particularly if we're not prepared to show the whole FMEA to the customer. This report might include the results achieved versus the goals that could link back to the five T's that we spoke about earlier. It could include a summary of the high risk failures that have been identified. It could include a summary of the actions we've taken so far, and it could include a plan for ongoing improvement. And last but not least, what have we learned throughout the FMEA process? Hopefully now the team have a much more enhanced understanding of the process and they can reflect on the lessons learned. One of the main things the team need to ask the question of themselves as a team is has doing the FMEA delivered results? because management have committed to a lot of investment, now are we seeing the results? And we can use data to help us show whether the FMEA process has been effective. Many of you watching this video series will work in organizations that already have certification to IETF 16949. One of the requirements in there is about management review. And I want to focus on three particular inputs into management review. One is management should be reviewing the cost of poor quality. So that's the cost of internal and external non-conformance. Management should be focusing on identification of potential field failures through risk analysis. So this is where failures haven't occurred, but potentially could occur. And also management will be focusing on things that have gone wrong, the actual field failures, and what impact did they have on safety or the environment. Hopefully, if we've done FMEA correctly, there will not be any incidents of actual field failures. So improvement, the whole purpose of FMEA is to drive risk reduction. So improvement does not stop here. Development and maintenance of FMEA is an ongoing process. And I think FMEA is a great tool for driving ongoing process improvement, which will lead to improved customer satisfaction and the reduction in the cost of poor quality. But FMEA will only be effective if we truly adopt a multidisciplinary team and management give that team 
all the resources they need to implement FMEA effectively. So I hope you've enjoyed watching this video series and I wish you every success in your ongoing continual improvement journey.